Shahnameh Stories The Seven Labors of Rostam Haft Khane Rostam The Combat with Arjangdeev It was nightfall by the time Rostam arrived in Mazandaran where he was greeted by the strange sight of flaming torches and loud clamoring Ola told him that this was the entrance to the land of the demons and as was their custom the dev stayed awake during the night making wild noises around fires and that the loudest one was their general the dev arjang the next day having tied ola to a tree rostam rode out toward the demon army and gave a piercing battle cry that shook the sea and mountains hearing the bellow Arjang rushed out of his tent. Rostam spurred on his horse and charging at the div grabbed him by the head and ears and holding him down by his shoulders ripped off his head like a lion. He then threw the bloody head at the demon army and tore into them. Trampling over each other the divs fled in terror and Rostam and tied Ulad and set off to find Kekovus. Arjangdev was a popular subject and there are at least 54 known illustrations of this scene that vary both in the presentation and illustrated content of the story. Earlier manuscript illustrations extend across the entire width or are fitted like a window into a full page of text. The sketchy outline and color wash give the impression of a fresco rather than a painting but what they lack in the intricate and detailed craftsmanship of later miniature painting they make up for in spontaneity and animation The illustrations can deviate from the text in omitting Arjang's tent the surrounding divs and even Ulad and the addition of details to enhance the drama similarly a change in the perception of the div occurs over time before the 16th century this div is shown at its most horrendous an ugly vicious monster that revolts and terrifies this early shahnameh's minimalist composition dispenses with all but the main event set against a pale hillside dotted with clumps of flowers the artist has omitted the tent the tied up ulad and even the surrounding divs specified in the narrative nothing distracts from the central action where with the constructional simplicity of a series of triangles the artist has stripped the scene down to its core drama of rostam and arjang battling on a high hill mounted and dressed in his characteristic tiger skin and leopard head helmet rostam holds the vile half naked brown monster by the horns and twists his head off arjang's flaccid flop as he is dragged is accentuated by his limp limbs in contrast to the strutting rash whose tail springs up in a spry swish the scene is at once static and charged with tense energy that underscores the stark struggle of good and its hard won victory over evil rostam's face is frozen in focused determination as is the monster's whose horror stricken grimace is created by the shell shocked eyes and the tongue dangling from his fangs as the vicious arjang chokes the ripples of his mouth emit his agony in an excruciating howl that reverberates into the deathly silence of the barren landscape with nothing to humanize it in any way this is a good example of the early perception of the div as the monster that we are glad to see defeated and killed by the hero 
In this chilling illustration, two alarmed divs peer down from behind a mass of petrified rocks that push the action to the forefront, where div Ad Zhang is beset by both Rostam and Ulad. Caught off guard, the leopard-attired, ferocious black Arjang gapes as he feels and hears his head ripped off his shoulders in one loud, gory snap. Brought to his knees, his shock is communicated by the unusual turquoise colour of the flaming eyelids shared by the two wolf-like thieves at the top that is directed by the only four lines of text have bolted. The artist, however, has modified the narrative by showing the usually bound Ulad advising Rostam as he tears Arjang's head off. Behind them, myriad rock spirits susurrate and whisper within the towering effervescent white turquoise and blue boulders that fizzle between the bleating cypress bushes that swerve queasily against the gold sky. However, from the 16th century onwards, Arjang Div has modified his appearance. The most dramatic contrast that showcases this difference in the presentation of the Div appears, of course, in the extraordinary Shahnameh of Shah Tahmasp. In the foreground of a brilliantly burnished gold landscape, with rising undulations brushed with lilac, Rostam fights Div Arjang. Unlike the white Div, whom he fights within his dark cave, Arjang has come out of his tent, which is nowhere in sight, to grapple with the hero. Although, as always, the text has Rostam ripping off the demon's head and spewing blood all over, here the artist has chosen not to stain the pristine gold and pastel landscape with the crudeness of gushing blood. The tenuous grip of the div as he struggles to restrain Rash with one hand while grasping Rostam's wrist in an effort to pull him off his horse is conveyed not in the legs but in the twisting barks of the bushes which strain forward as their branches flay and flap wildly. The pale blue, pink and lilac rocks sprout bright-eyed flowers who add their own clamour to the fray. Cheering from a safe distance, those who had ventured closer to the combat scamper back kicked by Rash's front hooves or slapped away by the swish of his tail. This painting is by the artist Abdul Wahab, who follows in the footsteps of his mentor, that most illustrious of all artists, Sultan Muhammad. Here, the div's long distinguished nose, absence of gore, and groomed wavy mane make this Arjang a worthy opponent in contrast to the barbaric beast of earlier depictions. In this magical atmosphere imbued with spirituality, the gold of the landscape is reflected in the Dives' eyes, which surely inspire pathos in their vacant last moments of life. <laughs>